Good morning. And welcome to Women's Wellness Day 2013. Um, we're going to talk, as Kathy said, she introduced us all. We're going to talk about easy and healthy meal planning. So I'm sure all of you can kind of relate to this cartoon. If you can't see it, it says, I'm starving, Mom. What's for dinner? What's for after dinner? What's for bedtime snacks? So as a child walks in, he asks, and it seems like a never-ending um, question to all of us. But hopefully after this morning's talk, um, and you'll have a few different ideas and some practical strategies to um, not only what to eat, but to make sure that you're feeding your loved ones the best uh, nutritious, healthy foods that you can. So let's talk about what gets in the way of meal planning. Um, there's a number of things that gets in the way of meal planning. So um, just to name a few, work, kids, running kids back and forth to school, running them to various um, after school activities, stress, other commitments, um, and should we just say maybe life gets in the way? So um, there are probably plenty of times that we're just tired and really just don't feel like cooking, so we end up just grabbing something, um, fast food, um, and it's always not the best option. So what are some advantages of meal planning? Um, here's three that we have listed. Um, first of all, it saves money. A lot of people don't realize that it does save money, but it does. Promotes healthier eating and ends up saving us time. So, some meal planning tips that we want to kind of keep in mind um, when we're thinking about what we're going to eat is um, having a few of the staple ingredients on hand. So I just listed a few different ones, whole wheat, um, pasta, brown rice, dried beans, those types of things are um, helpful if you kind of keep them on hand. Planning meals around weekly store specials. Um, why not go meatless um, for a meal or two? Prepare extra food um, for leftovers um, so we could freeze them. And then keep a running shopping list and kind of drop, jot down those items as you run out. So let's talk about each meal specifically. I'm going to talk about breakfast. There's plenty of benefits to eating breakfast. Um, breakfast is a great way to get calcium and other nutrients. It helps to improve our mood and concentration. Breakfast promotes also a healthy body weight and it is, um, helps you to feel more energized. So it's actually the most important meal of, of the day. So what are some quick and easy breakfast tips? Um, we dietitians here at Pennington always say plan ahead. That's the, our, our biggest thing. If you hear us say anything, it's usually plan ahead. So make sure that you have some items on hand so you're less likely to swing by the donut shop on the way to work. So you can prepare breakfast the night before by having fruit already cut up. Um, have some extra eggs on hand that you've boiled and it ready in the refrigerator, just ready to go. So I listed a few um, breakfast ideas that you may want to try, and I have the website where I got these from um, down at the bottom too. Just a couple of different quick and easy breakfast ideas that you don't have to pull out all kind of pots and pans and things like that for breakfast. The, I found this one, over, overnight oats in a jar, so you just end up putting oats, mixing um, oats, soy milk, banana, chia seeds, blueberries, and honey. Place it in the jar, grab the jar when you're heading out the door, drink it down, a very nutritious breakfast that has um, plenty of protein. No-bake energy balls, um, you just mix oatmeal, peanut butter, honey, flaxseed, chocolate chips and vanilla, make them into little round balls, pop those um, in your hand and head out the door. A poached egg, Canadian bacon and a low-fat piece of cheese um, on an English muffin is also another good choice. 
uh, yogurt, fruit, low-fat granola, or high-fiber cereal. Or make, if you have a little bit of extra time, having a, a breakfast burrito with eggs, red onions, baby spinach, tomatoes, any, pretty much anything that you enjoy. And this is a great way to get some veggies in the morning too. And I know, you know, we usually don't include veggies for breakfast. So those are some different ideas. So I mentioned chia seeds as well. And those may be something new <clears throat> to all of you. So this is kind of like the newest um, hot item on the, on the market right now. The chia seeds are um, actually, it's an herb, and it's a native to Mexico and Guatemala. So you can find these, I found them at Whole Foods yesterday, um, near the vitamins. And they kind of look like flax seeds, if you're familiar with that. But they're rich in omega-3 fatty acids, protein, fiber, calcium, antioxidants, and then I just listed the uh, nutritional information too. So it's something new that you may want to end up trying. It absorbs a lot of the water because they're high in fiber, and so you may want to try those as well. Um, so Catherine is going to talk about lunch. Um, it's Catherine Cash. All right, we can move on to lunch now. Um, this meal is often very challenging for a lot of people. Um, you want something quick, you want something easy, but you also want something that's very nutritious. So first of all, why is lunch important? Um, different reasons. Um, a lot of people think skipping lunch actually helps save calories. Well, if I don't eat lunch, then I can you know, have a nice dinner, but it doesn't work that way. Uh, your blood sugar goes down in the afternoon. You start getting really, really hungry. The first thing you see, it may be those donuts left over from breakfast at work, and you grab one and you, you rationalize it that, you know, okay, well, I can have this because I didn't have lunch. Um, you may go to the vending machine, grab something from, from the vending machine that may not be very nutritious. So, you know, Preparing, again, like Michelle said, planning ahead, and that's going to be the recurring theme um, throughout this is planning ahead uh, so that you don't be put in that situation um, later on in the day. Um, you feel bad when you don't have um, lunch. Your blood sugars do go down. You may get a headache. You get very irritable, or you may end up on the way home stopping at the fast food, getting something um, that you shouldn't have. So lots of reasons why it is important. So a few things that make up a healthy lunch when you're trying to plan. Um, try to get some whole grains in there. Try to get some lean um, protein, maybe something left over from the night before. Some fruits and vegetables, and then also some dairy, whenever you're thinking of what you're going to bring. So some healthy lunchbox tips. Um, one thing when people make sandwiches, you, you know, make your sandwich, you bring it to work, and then it's soggy you know, whenever you go to eat it. So packing your meat, your veggies, um, your bread all separately so you don't have that um, problem. Skip the chips. You can get some veggie strips instead, get some more nutrients there. Um, again, leftovers from the night before. And then if you like a little something sweet, um, adding a little piece of dark chocolate to satisfy that sweet tooth. So I put a couple of healthy lunch additions that you could add here. Um, some maybe thinking outside the box a little bit, um, but edamame, if you like edamame, they do have it frozen in the frozen section at the store. So taking that and you can add it to salads, you could add it maybe to um, uh, some stir fries that you have, something like that. Um, very rich in magnesium and B vitamins. Um, roasted chickpeas, this was a new one. Um, how you do this is take about three cups of chickpeas, canned chickpeas, rinse them and dry them off real thoroughly. Then you're going to put them on a um, baking sheet. Um, you don't want to just spread them out on the baking sheet. Put about a tablespoon of olive oil, toss them in that, add some maybe kosher salt or paprika on there, or any, any seasoning, whatever you want. Um, bake them for about 30 to 40 minutes at 350 degrees and you're going to get some little crunchy, a crunchy snack that's going to have more nutrients in it again. 
So um, a good source of protein and fiber. And you can add that maybe to salads um, for an extra little crunch in your salad. And then again, the veggie strips um, in place of the chips. So just keep some key ingredients on hand so that when you do go to plan your um, lunch for the next day, you have it there. And so it's not like you, you don't have it, so then, okay, well, I'm just going to have to go out and get something to eat the next day. Keep some of these key ingredients on hand so you're prepared. So I've listed a few um, lunch ideas, things that you can um, maybe put together real quick if you have those key ingredients on hand, some of the pita breads, the tortillas. Um, the first one, maybe you cooked pork tenderloin the night before. Um, cook a little bit extra for your evening meal so that you have something left over for the next day. Um, put some pork tenderloin and some um, greens, put it in a pita bread, toss with some light vinaigrette dressing. Um, have your veggie strips on the side and have some um, Greek yogurt to go along with it. You get your dairy in there and lots of protein. Um, or you can stir together um, canned tuna, white beans, um, cherry tomatoes, scallions, olive oil, lemon juice, salt and pepper, and put that in a tortilla. That can be made ahead, a couple days ahead, and you can use that even as your, a side as your evening meal or you can um, use it for the, the lunch the next day. Or something colorful, some broccoli salad. Um, you get your whole wheat pasta, and you can cook that ahead of time also. Um, you know, maybe on Sunday, do some of these things so that you have them for later in the week. Um, toss that with some smoky ham, sweet raisins, a light dressing made with low-fat mayo and non-fat um, plain yogurt. And sprinkle with some almonds. You can do that. And then a couple of salad ideas. Um, this is easy. They have all the salad mixes at, in the produce department. You can grab some of those. That, that makes it easier rather than having to wash your lettuce and everything. Um, it's very convenient. Mix that with maybe some grilled chicken that's left over from the night before with some light vinaigrette. And then you can add the chickpeas to this um, for some added crunch. Or you can make, um, take your whole wheat pasta you can mix that with some green beans. This is a nice green bean salad um, with celery, tomatoes, any, any veggies that you want um, with a light Asian um, vinaigrette. And then also you can add meat if you want to. But you can also have that as a meatless dish. So that's a, um, another option. So just a few different ideas. You want to be um, creative. You don't want to always have the turkey sandwich that you bring every day and that you get sick of. Um, so try to make lunch a priority, try to be creative, don't get stuck in a rut and have the same thing over and over again because it's going to get boring and you're going to get sick of it and you're not going to want to eat that every day. Um, if you're traveling, that's one thing that a lot of people say, well, you know, I'm on the road all day, I'm, I have to eat out. Well, bring a little small ice chest with you and put your lunch in your ice chest and then that way you can put yogurt in there, you can put a drink and then you don't have to stop somewhere, you're prepared. You've planned ahead. You, um, you're not, you're not um, have to just go to the fast food restaurant. Um, this is one thing that an idea that I got from a participant is a salad club at work. And each week, let's say you pick a day of the week that you want to have the salad on. Um, a few people get together, and one person is responsible that that week of bringing a salad and they bring enough to feed everybody that's in the salad club. The next week, somebody else does that. And you'd be surprised at how creative people can be. It's not just the same old salad every time, but it's, you don't have to worry about it every week. You know, you just worry about that one week, and then other people um, take care of it um, the next weeks. So that, that, I thought that was a fun idea. Um, and just include color, like we said, the dairy, protein, whole grains in every um, lunch. But then have a backup plan. Make sure that if you do forget or you don't have something on hand, what is going to be the backup plan that you have? If you have a freezer at work, maybe a diet frozen dinner that you can put in the freezer and that you can grab in case you, you forget your lunch on the counter or something like that. Or know all the restaurants that are around you, all the different options, and have a um, meal that you would pick, a healthy meal. And so you're not just put at the last minute, okay, well, I'm just going to grab this because it's the easiest thing. You know, plan ahead and know what's out there and what's um, convenient for you. And I think that's it. We're going to move on to dinner. Give it over to Irma.
So what's the most dreaded question of busy women everywhere? Huh? Mom, honey, sweetheart, what's for dinner, huh? All right? I mean, pretty much our answer can go either way, either some not-so-healthy options or some healthy options. You know, I have Pizza Hut or Domino's Pizza on speed dial, where's the nearest drive through let them fend for themselves. We pretty much don't think about dinner until the end of the workday when we pick up our purse and heading out the door, right? So there are some healthy options that we can do. Again, plan it ahead. Plan at least three to four easy meals each week using our crock pot. Crock pot is an easy way to have dinner ready for us at the end of the day. Theme nights are real good. Pick Wednesday. Have Wednesday as a spaghetti night or homemade pizza night. And if all else fails, go to Walmart, pick up a rotisserie chicken, two bags of salad greens, and you got a healthy dinner. So I like keeping things simple. So before you begin to eat, think about what your plate should look like. Foods like fruits and vegetables and whole grains and low-fat dairy um, products and lean protein can contain pretty much all the nutrients that you need for the day without adding on too many calories. So make half your plate fruits and vegetables. Choose more of skim milk, 1% milk. Choose more, make at least half your whole grains whole, half your grains whole. And then vary your protein food choices. Now, you may not like this, but you don't necessarily have to have meat at every single meal. Try a meatless meal one day out of the week. Um, and then also maybe twice a week have some type of seafood. Now, I'm not talking about fried catfish and fried shrimp and oysters. None of that, okay? Um, eat beans, which are a natural source of protein and fiber. And then also keep meat and poultry lean and cut back on the portions. So these are just some quick and easy dinner ideas. Very simple. You see, chicken. Chicken is probably a million and one ways you can cook chicken. Uh, bake, grill, steam, broil chicken. You can grill or broil shrimp, fish. Serve that with some steamed veggies wild rice, whole wheat pasta, baked potato, a medium baked potato, not another Jason's deli size big potatoes you see. So a medium baked potato, crock pots. Throw all the ingredients in the crock pot right before you go to work. Um, I've even tried a low-fat lasagna in a crock pot. It actually works. Someone told me about it, and it really, really works. And what's so good about it, at the end of the day, when you get home, it's all done, and the house smells wonderful. <laughs> and then um, taco night. You can make at least one night. Taco night, spaghetti night, pizza night, pot roast night. Um, throw in some lean meat, whole wheat tortillas, and some fun toppings. Pork tenderloin, some lean pork chops, sweet potatoes and a green salad. Nothing really complicated. Now again, like Catherine said, we tend to kind of eat the same foods over and over and over, and that gets old, it gets tiring, it gets boring, and then we kind of switch over to fast food, right? Don't want to think about it. So kind of add some variety into your diet. Um, the American Heart Association recommends adding salmon or other omega-3 rich uh, foods in your diet at least twice per week. It's also a great source of protein, and flaxseed also is a good source of omega-3 as well. You can pretty much add, say, a tablespoon of flaxseed in your soups, in your stews. You can add a teaspoon to your mayonnaise, low-fat mayonnaise, or in mustard to get in that extra um, flaxseed. Or you can even add a tablespoon to yogurt. Now, I know tofu, it's not really all that appealing to the eye, um, 
but it's another good source of protein. It's very high in calcium. You can add tofu to stews and you can add it to soup. Um, you can even have tofu as a little spread in place of mayonnaise. Mix it in with cottage cheese and you got a nice spread. Or you can even add tofu to breadcrumbs. Put in some breadcrumbs, throw in some onions and garlic and bell peppers, and you got your nice tofu burger. You may not even want to eat beef anymore after the tofu burger. <laughs> so these are some great resources. There's a million and one that's on the internet. You can pretty much Google anything. There's cooking light that's eating well. Supercook, Zip List, um, some that have crock pot recipes. If you only have 10 minutes, 30 minutes, um, seasonal recipes, comfort recipes, um, you can pretty much find a lot of good, healthy recipes on the internet. And of course, we have apps. There's a lot of apps that's on the market that you can, I'm sorry. Holly Clegg, she has a mobile rush hour recipe app. You're going to get actually recipes delivered to your phone and a shopping list. So if you're on your way home, you can easily get this, go to the store, and pick up dinner for the evening. There's also an app called What's for Dinner. Uh, pretty much, you enter your food in your kitchen. And it will give you recipes based on those ingredients. So if you don't have like 10 minutes, 20 minutes, it will give you recipes based on the time frame that you have to prepare. So menu planner is another good one. You can store recipes. You can create shopping lists. And you can even plan meals. So these are just a few that you'll find. Some are free and some you have to pay a small fee for. And then above all, have fun with it. The more meal planning you do, the easier it will become. So try new things, experiment a little bit. Try a different fruit or a different vegetable once a week. Find a new recipe that includes those fruits or vegetables. And just try to get outside of your box and do something a little bit different. Um, Louisiana has some of the best food we know. Um, so use some local cookbooks that include some of our culture and our cuisine. And then, like I said, have fun with the process. Get your children involved. I mean, make them earn their keep if they're going to be in the house. <laughs> Enjoy watching how your habits improve and change over time. So if you feed them, they will come. They may not want to go home, but they will come and stay. So Catherine's going to talk about snacks. Hello. So snacks. A lot of times people think of snacks as being an area where you can really get into trouble. And this is somewhat true. It just kind of depends on how you prepare it, just like with any other meal. So we're going to look into that a little bit today. So in case you can't read it, it says, they tried adding healthy snacks to the office vending machine, but all that rotting fruit made the candy bars taste bad. <laughs> Sound familiar? <laughs> so let's look at some of the benefits of snacking. So snacking curbs cravings, believe it or not. It's a good opportunity to satisfy that hunger between meals. It prevents you from overeating at a later meal. For instance, between lunch and dinner, you might get very hungry, and that's a good opportunity to have a snack. That way, when dinner comes around, you don't eat everything in sight. So this can really be a beneficial thing. It boosts energy. A lot of times when you're working, a lot of people get those 3 o'clock sleepies. Um, this is a great way to kind of prevent that or help with that. Definitely gives you a little pick-me-up later in the day. It can aid in weight control, again, kind of for the same reasons as already discussed. It can prevent you from overeating at a later meal. 
And of course, decreases hunger. Obviously, if you're very hungry, eating a little snack is a good way to satisfy that. So some smart snacking strategies. Be prepared. Does that sound familiar? Plan ahead. That's exactly what we're looking for here. A lot of snacks that end up getting people into trouble are the snacks that are unplanned. So be prepared, have some backup strategies, have some last minute snack ideas, have things on hand. Make it nutritious. Fruits and vegetables, wonderful, wonderful snacks, whole grains. There are a lot of wonderful snack options out there that are easy just to grab and go and are very good for you. And as a tip, keep snacks between 100 and 150 calories. In other words, no donuts. So again, we see that snacks can be good for you as long as you keep it within reason. Remember, keep it nutritious, keep it low calorie. So in case you can't read that, unplanned snacks are often triggered by one of these. Being too hungry. Kind of already discussed that a little bit. Um, maybe you didn't get enough to eat at lunch. You had to eat really fast. You didn't get to finish lunch for whatever reason. And mid-afternoon rolls around. All of a sudden, you're starving. That vending machine is looking really good. Not the one with the fruit, but the one with all of that candy and stuff. Being tired or overworked. This can make you crave sugar and things like that. Um, a lot of times that's when you'll go and grab that quick snack that wasn't planned. So that can definitely be an issue there. Feeling stressed, anxious, or bored. Everybody has some degree of emotional eating. Some people suffer from it more than others. If you happen to be one of those, then this may trigger you to go for an unplanned, unhealthy snack. Seeing or smelling food. This is a tough one. Somebody brings in those donuts in the morning and they smell so good and you just want them so bad and you end up eating two, three, four, however many. So that can definitely be a trigger right there. Doing certain activities, like watching TV. When people have snacks while they're doing things like this, we tend to call this mindless eating. Because you're just putting the food in your mouth and you're not really thinking about what you're doing. And again, that's a place that can really get you into some trouble. And of course, celebrating on holidays or special events. A lot of times, there's a spread of food that's out. And even after the meal is over, you may just go back through and pick up a couple of things and munch on them just because it's there. Um, but if you're thinking about it, if you keep in mind a concept called conscious eating, um, and you keep planning your snacks, then you can avoid things like that. So how do you make it nutritious? Well, let's look at a few examples. Fruits and vegetables, like I mentioned before, these are wonderful snacks. They help you feel full. They're full of fiber. They're also full of vitamins and minerals. So not only are they very, very good for you, but they can curb cravings and help you feel fuller longer. Low-fat dairy products, like low-fat yogurt or low-fat cheese or something like that, very high in calcium and protein. Again, these can help you feel fuller longer and provide you with a lot of good nutrients. And whole grains. These are rich in complex carbohydrates and fiber. So wheat thins, for example, 100% whole wheat. It's a great snack. And here's some examples of some pretty nutritious grab-and-go snacks that meet the calorie requirements we discussed before. A cup of skim milk. It's a quick and easy snack. Three cups of popcorn. Now I'm not talking about movie theater popcorn where you're adding all that butter. Just three cups of popcorn, regular that you buy in the store. String cheese. Remember it's good to look for low fat versions of this. Instant oatmeal. Whole grain, very nutritious. Um, yogurt, apples, bananas, and a cup of chocolate Cheerios. That sounds good. Um, for a little bit 
more calories, 150 calories, we have a kashi bar, almonds, nuts are full of beneficial nutrients. But see, it only says an ounce, so you have to remember nuts are very high in calories. Two tablespoons of hummus and five wheat crackers. It's a good snack right there. Half a cup of low-fat cottage cheese with fruit. Another easy-to-put-together snack. And small apple with a tablespoon of peanut butter. So these are just some quick, easy, grab-and-go, healthy snacks. And I'd also like to talk a little bit about blueberries because I tend to think that blueberries are a very easy snack and they are full of nutrients. They're wonderful snacks. Um, so I'm going to talk a little about the benefits of these. They're full of dietary fiber. Again, something that helps you feel fuller longer. They're high in antioxidants. They can help prevent chronic disease. And they're also very high in vitamins and minerals, more specifically vitamin C and manganese. So good for immune health and bone health. Lots of good nutrients. So these are a few snack ideas related to blueberries. The first one is a Blue Wave smoothie. It's pretty simple and easy to make. You mix two cups of blueberries, eight ounces of low-fat vanilla yogurt, six ounces of unsweetened pineapple juice, three tablespoons of honey, and add one and a half cups of ice cubes, and you have five smoothies right there. Each one is about 150 calories. So full of nutrients, still meets our calorie requirement. Also, blueberry topped rice cake. I thought this one was pretty interesting, a little bit different. Um, an apple cinnamon flavored rice cake with a little bit of ricotta cheese, half a teaspoon of apricot preserves. Also add a quarter cup of thinly sliced apples and your fresh blueberries go on top. And then the blueberry bubble cone. Tapioca or rice pudding with one and a half cups of fresh blueberries and six small ice cream cones, so you end up with six of these. Make six servings, each is about 57 calories. Not bad. So some different creative ideas using blueberries. So to conclude our talk today on meal planning, remember to plan ahead. This is so, so, so important. Can't emphasize that enough. Saves time and money and promotes healthy eating. When you plan in advance, you can plan healthy snacks. It's a lot easier to grab those unhealthy snacks when they're unplanned. Always include nutrient-dense foods. Uh, things we talked about today, chia seeds, edamame, chickpeas, blueberries, flaxseed, all of these are full of nutrients and wonderful things to incorporate into your diet. Uh, keep it simple. Remember, simple meals save time and money, and they don't require sacrificing nutritious foods. Simple meals can be full of nutritious foods. Um, so this is just to give you an idea of some easy tips and easy ways to plan your meals. And I think at this time, we're going to open it up for questions.